Happy Tuesday, my friends. It is March 26, 2024, and it is an ugly NBA slate. But like the DGens that we are, we're going to still find winners. So let me dive into it. This is the free three. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video. I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as we just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Now, yesterday, not my favorite day on the channel, and we paid for it. One and two on the day. We did cash on Jalen Green's points. We got over there very late in the game. He got that last dunk for us hey we have to put us over we needed that we did lose on the knicks and pistons under as i kind of researched that game a little bit later throughout the day and was looking at the line movement i kind of liked that play less and less but say hey, it happens and mcbride we did look on his points we would have cashed in if devin chandler wasn't forcing all those threes trying to go for the knicks record there hey 11 three pointers for devin chandler 40 points on the game kudos to him but mcbride definitely had some of the volume there early but once we saw that devin chandler was going for that record that was just about cooked but we still hooked, but one and two on the day, not our finest day. You can look at our year today record here. I've updated all the records from the, over the weekend. I've updated everything from yesterday. We are 37 and 32 for the month of March. Not too, too bad. Hopefully, we can be able to pick it up with a few more days left to go in the month. But guess what, guys? We've got opening day in baseball to start the season this Thursday. Super pumped for that on top of NCAA games. So we're going to have a loaded card ending off the week, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So for today, we're going to go a little bit lighter on the card. Just only two best bets for you. But listen, we've still got winners to give. So if you can, drop that like and subscribe to the channel. So this way you guys can stay up to date on all the latest picks and plays. Now let's dive into these best bets for this short Tuesday NBA card. For my first best bet of the day, like I mentioned, we don't have that best of an NBA slate. Kind of ugly games on the card today. And this first game is an ugly game in terms of the spread. But I'm going to go with one player who I'm expecting to go off today. And we are going to rock with D'Angelo Russell over 19.5 points, minus 125 odds. Now, if you get this at 20.5, I'm not opposed to that as well. But I would try to get this 19 and a half number. This is the best look that you can get here. D'Angelo Russell has absolutely balled out against the Bucks. They played earlier this year. He played 38 minutes in that game. Had 44 points, 9 assists on 68% shooting from the field. On 75% shooting from the 3-point line. Am I expecting another 44-point performance from D'Angelo Russell? No. But can we expect 20 points from him? I think we can expect that. Why? Because it's been an angle that we've been exploiting all year on the channel. The Bucks give up a ton of points to point guards. They've been getting killed by point guards all year, especially scoring point guards. The Bucks give up the third most points per game to point guards. And even though D'Angelo Russell sometimes plays a facilitator role and maybe takes a back seat, today is a game where I expect him to have to step up a little bit. One, because Anthony Davis is probable. I think he does play in this game. But LeBron James is doubtful. I don't think he plays in this game because this is the first night of the back-to-back -back for the Lakers as they travel to play Memphis tomorrow, and that is more of an impactful game. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, the Bucks and Memphis? And you're saying that the Memphis Grizzlies are more impactful of a game than the Bucks? The Bucks are a playoff team. This is a team that they can contend with for the championship. You are right. But when you keep in mind that right now in the Western Conference, everything is going to come down to tiebreakers. Everything is going to come down to seeding. Because the Bucks are in the Eastern Conference and the Grizzlies are in the Western Conference, that Western Conference matchup tomorrow is a lot more important. So I expect LeBron not to play today and for him to play tomorrow, which means that there should be more minutes for D'Angelo Russell. That also should mean that more volume, more shooting should come his way. More volume, more shooting should head his way. And I think this is just a good opportunity against a Bucks team, like I said, that's been getting killed by points guards all year over the last five games the angel russell has kind of flirted with this number here and there he's averaging about 16 and a half points per game over the last five games then his last matchup against the 76ers on friday he did miss this total only scoring 14 points in that game but he shot 4 of 13 from the field 4 of 10 from the three-point lines. I'm not a big fan of the shooting numbers, but I am a fan of the volume. In his last three straight games, he shot at least 10 three-pointers, hitting four against the Sixers, six against the Hawks, where he also had that 27 points in that game. And then he also hit three out of 10 against the Warriors in the game before that, where he also had 23. So he's gone over this total in two of the last three games, so you can't be too mad at it, shooting at least 10 three-pointers in all those games as well, and at least 15 field goal attempts in those three games as well. So for me, the volume is there. 
there. The numbers are going to be there. And considering what the Lakers have on the line in terms of that competitive Western Conference and the fact that LeBron isn't going to probably play today, I think that this is an opportunity for D'Angelo Russell to step up today, at least get a lot of volume. So 19.5 points, not too much to ask for. You may want to look at his three-point line as well, over three and a half threes. Is that about plus money or minus 105? Again, he's getting the three-point volume up. So that might be something you want to look at or maybe tease down in a parlay. But I like D'Angelo Russell's points today, not overthinking it. Let's just go with him here. Here to be able to keep his team close in this game it's a big spread in favor of the bucks which is why i'm kind of scared to kind of play a side on it but i think that d'angelo russell should be able to get his points in this matchup for my second best bet of the day and my final best bet of the day it's actually not in the nba so let me give you a few nba leans right now that you guys can take a look at i do lean the warriors on the matchup today against the heat even though they are, are on the road now the warriors are a team that is in that competitive western conference and they're right now flirting with losing out in terms of getting to the play on game in general the rockets are right on their ass one game back behind them is the rockets in terms of against the warriors warriors need to win every game possible they dropped a few big games last week one against the pacers which was a very winnable game at home they lost by four to the timberwolves so this is a matchup to take on a heat team that's absolutely decimated by injuries no tyler hero no jaime Hawkins, no kevin love those are just a few guys that are missing for the miami heat here so i think injuries are going to play a factor in that matchup i think you can also take a look at some Bonus is player props today as well, as the Kings are on the second night of the back-to-back, -back, but they are taking on the Mavericks, who are also on the second night of back-to-back. -back. But the Mavericks are in the bottom five in the NBA in points allowed to power forwards and centers. So I think Sabonis has the opportunity to grub against them. So that might be an angle that you want to look at. And Zion Williamson's assist is another angle that you want to look at. Couldn't recommend it on the channel as it's five and a half now. Is that like minus 150, minus 160? I'm sorry, books. It's been super juiced and it's been super bet up since it, the line opened late last night. But I do think Zion can be able to get five, six, seven assists today. He's been able to go over the summer pretty consistently with Brandon Ingram out and he's going to continue to be out for the foreseeable future. So I think Zion Williamson should have a good looks and be able to dive and dish today. So those are a few leans that you guys can maybe want to look at, dive into a little bit more, or maybe add to your card. Haven't gotten to the window with them just yet, but I wanted to keep, kind of give you guys that. Now, for my last best bet of the day, I am going to go to the college basketball slate. And I know I said I'm not taking any NIT games, and I do still stand by that statement. But now we are kind of in that point in the NIT tournament. Now that we're in the quarterfinals, we kind of know who's taking this tournament seriously at this point and who's not. We know who's kind of going for the championship or at least trying to make a statement at the other teams that have kind of just coasted by. Now, speaking of teams that have kind of coasted by, that's what I think when I look at Cincinnati and what they've done so far in the NIT. And now they take on an Indiana State team that I think is very motivated to win this tournament, considering they were one of the first four teams out of the NCAA tournament. And I think they should have gotten in, in all honesty. They had an amazing season there in the Missouri Valley Conference. They just lost in the championship game to a very good Drake Bulldogs team. And I think that conference should have gotten two bids, especially considering the fact that the Mountain West has basically fumbled and not showed up in the tournament. So for today, I'm going to go with Indiana State, minus three and a half over Cincinnati. Sorry for the Cincinnati logo. That's kind of small there. Um, that's kind of hidden in the black backdrop. But they're playing. Indiana State is taking on Cincinnati. And for me, I am going to go with Indiana State in this matchup because this game is at home for Indiana State, which I think is going to be a big advantage for them considering the fact they are a mid-major program. And because they're a mid-major program, not a whole lot of things are going on in Indiana right now. So all the fans should come out tonight and root on their team. But I also like the form that Indiana State has been on in this tournament. So one thing about the NIT, right, is they like to try out new rules rules that they're thinking of implementing into the game and as kind of like a test sample size. So one of the new rule changes that they're testing out in the NIT this year is extending the lane, making it a little bit wider, which is now spreading out the floor even wider. So think about it this way, right? When you have a wider lane, now that it's a larger part of the floor that's being taken up, so the offensive player that's playing maybe in the middle of the zone can't just hang out there for as long. Why? Because the, the lane is wider. Now you get a quicker offensive three seconds. But Indiana State runs a five-out offense. And this wider lane has only benefited them. Why? Because it's spread it out the floor a lot further. We've seen them trail in this tournament in their first round matchup against SMU. And guess what? They came back in that game. So that's why I really like them in this matchup. On the wider lane, the five-out offense has this offense firing on all cylinders. They dropped 101 points against SMU. They dropped 76 points against Minnesota on Sunday. And now they're going to take on a Cincinnati team that's missing two of their starters because they're not playing in the NIT. And this is a team 
that is known for their defense, that is Cincinnati, currently ranked 15th in defensive efficiency according to Ken Palm, 39th in effective field goal percentage. But they're playing on an Indiana State team that is very, very good on the offensive side. 18th in adjustment efficiency, 12th in three-point percentage, number one in two-point percentage, number one in effective field goal percentage. So this is an offense that we should have seen in the NCAA tournament, in all honesty, because they have so many weapons. Obviously, they're led by the big man, Mr. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or whatever they call him, right? The, they have all the different nicknames for Robbie Avila there. The big man who can pass it, he can shoot it, he can dribble it, he can do all types of things, standing at 6'10", and he's only a sophomore, so we should be able to see him in the tournament before his career is done but they also have ryan conwell the guard there who can stretch the floor out there we've got isaiah swoop as well the 510 junior guard for indiana state so they have a lot of offensive weapons that i think is going to be able to exploit this weaker cincinnati team because they're missing two starters and if you look at the two games that they played thus far in the nit they had to win in overtime against san fran not to say that wasn't a hard fought win but it took a game winning three pointer with three seconds left for them to win that game by one and then they were able to blow past a pretty easy brad team another mid-major that Cincinnati starters are missing or not is probably much better than but now they're going against the Indiana State team on the road in a rocking rat atmosphere in a team that's felt like that they should have been seal slided a little bit of a revenge factor to win the NIT here today I think that this is a team that is going to go all the way to the garden is going to compete for the championship so we got a three and a half point spread which is basically one or two buckets here I think that Indiana State wins this game pretty easily covering that spread Ken Palm has this as a three-point win for Indiana State, which I do like. And I think this offense is going to be able to show some people what they can do. They should have been able to do it in the tournament. But hey, NIT, not too bad of a consolation prize. And I think that we should be able to get W today with Indiana State. Well, that's it for me today, my friends. Two best bets, just two winners headed to you on this card. Give me D'Angelo Russell over 19.5 points and give me Indiana State minus 3.5 points against Cincinnati. I did give you guys a few other leans that you can take a look at as well, whether it's D'Angelo Russell's three, Zion's assists, some bonus points, even the Warriors on the money line on the spread. A few different things that you guys can take a look at on this Tuesday card. For more picks and plays that I'm going to find throughout the day, make sure you click the link in the description, join the free Discord group, and we'll see you guys on the other side. All right, my friends, let's have a day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, we can celebrate 2-0 day and we continue to run up that bankroll all right my friends take your fate i'll see y'all tomorrow